Hi. Today, we're going to be discussing fault tolerant uh, strategies for APIs and integrations. And in particular, today, we're going to really discuss what we call the circuit breaker pattern. So the circuit breaker pattern is essentially a pattern that will allow if a particular API fails a certain number of times or a certain percentage of times, that will automatically stop sending requests over to that API to allow it time to catch up or heal itself. So really what this is allowing you to do and some of the risks that we're avoiding is firstly going to be sending unnecessary requests over to that API. And the next thing that we're, we're going to be avoiding or more or less going to be allowing the API to do is allowing the API time to heal itself. All right. So now that we understand the, you know, some of the risks that we're avoiding or some of the things that we're allowing the, the API to do, let's talk about what the actual pattern itself looks like. So if we start, basically the, we're going to have three components associated with this. Firstly, we're going to have our client, which will be the one actually sending the requests. In between the client and the API, we will actually, this is where we'll have our circuit breaker. And then finally, we have our API. So the way I'm going to represent this is just with a series of swim lanes to show how those interactions are going to look between each one of these. So the first step that we're going to do is just by nature, we're going to have the circuit breaker is going to monitor all API calls. So if we go through and we're going to actually, you know, if we were to make a call with this, so the client's going to go ahead and we're going to go through, it's going to call the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker will then pass the call back to the API. If this API were to go and return back a failed message, the circuit breaker would recognize that after a certain number of failed messages or a certain percentage of failed messages, the circuit breaker can go and do what we call opening the circuit. So if you think about a wire going through an uh, uh, electrical circuit, if you break those wires apart, the electrical current can no longer flow through there. So here we, we get our failures. We're going to open our circuit. So after a certain number or percentage of failures, open the circuit. Now, here we're still going to return a failed message back to the client. Now what's going to happen is if this client tries to call this API again and we have the circuit open, we're no longer going to be able to reach this API anymore. So if we try and call this, we're going to automatically fail this request going back without reaching that API. Now what that's going to allow us to do is to allow that API time to heal. So maybe it had too many requests or maybe there was some kind of a patching process or something that was going on over here. This is going to give it a little bit of time to be able to heal itself. And so when we do this, we're going to actually start a timer and say, okay, after a certain period of time, we're going to allow this to, to happen. So. Number three is we're going to uh, give time to the API to 
to heal. And we're going to auto fail requests. So after this period of time surpasses, we can, what we can do is we can half close the circuit breaker. So what this is going to do is only allow a certain number of, of requests to go back over to this API. So again, if you think about closing the circuit, we're going to allow some of the traffic to go, to go back. And so now what will, what'll happen is if we go and, um, send a, send a request through, some of these requests will actually will allow back through. So we'll send it over here and let's say, for instance, the re response back was successful. That's great. We're going to send back that positive re uh, response back to the client. What we're going to do is we're going to fully close this circuit now. So now we're able to continue fl uh, traffic flowing all the way through, just like normal. Let's say, for instance, we were to receive a another failed response back. So. We're gonna pretend like we didn't get a positive response back. We got, a, we got a failed response back. Now what we can do is, at this point it was half closed, we're going to reopen that, that circuit. So just like we were back up here, we're gonna start our timer again. After that period of time, we can half close it, test it to see you know, whether the responses are still working, and then we can go back and either open or close it again. So, um, Number four is we're going to half close the circuit. If it fails, we're going to open the circuit. If success, close the circuit. And again, if we were, if it fails, we're just going to go right back up to uh, this part right here. So we're going to open it back up and we're going to start the process all over again. So with that being said, this is the basic pattern for our circuit breaker, which is going to really allow us to not send unneeded requests to a, to a particular API that is broken and needs time to heal. Um, again, this can be utilized uh, in conjunction with all the other different patterns. So if we wanted to use a retry pattern or timeout patterns and things like that to send failures or to, to retry different APIs, we can certainly reuse those here. But really what this is going to allow us to do is to uh, not send unneeded requests. So with that being said, this is a circuit breaker pattern. Thank you and have a great day.